World champion divers aren't born, they are made. Made over a lifetime of hard work, perseverance, and passion to get to one place. Tentatively yet expectantly standing on a platform in a country thousands of miles away with one goal, to land the perfect dive. The mental and physical preparation on the road to the Olympics for Canadian divers is the ultimate challenge. Meeting this challenge requires sacrifice, commitment, and a dedication to excellence that very few possess. Steadfast in the pursuit of their dreams, these elite athletes continually redefine success in order to make the leap from platform to podium. Strong minds and strong bodies, each sculpted, exhausted, and refined over countless hours of training and competition, pushing the boundaries of what's possible, skillfully and gracefully twisting and turning at incredible speeds high in the air, with only seconds to pierce the still water below with as little impact as possible. The stakes are high, success is measured in a fraction of a degree, and some of the best lessons are learned at the hands of defeat. It's hard for people to understand if they haven't, you know, sort of grabbed something to hold on to that they want so very bad. Passing those, those stages, making yourself a better athlete every day, um, that's all because of the Olympics. And that's the place we, and that we want to be. That's the place we want to live. There's no formula, right? Like, if it were easy, everybody would do it. You must want it the most for the longest. Everybody wants it on the day of the trials. It's when you're exhausted, when you are frustrated, when you're confused. What are you doing then? The thing about diving in competition and then specifically at the Olympics is it, it's a mental game. It's the person that can handle that pressure and step up in that critical moment that will be you know, on the podium. And that's what we've seen time and time again is just the mental strength. Like, you get this one shot every four years to do six dives, and if you, it doesn't matter if you're a European champion, world champion, Commonwealth champion, Pan Am champion, if you mess up on that one day, you're out. Rosaline Filion and Selena Toth know the reality of these stakes very well, both battling for Canada's last remaining Olympic spot in the women's 10-meter event. The Canada Cup will play a crucial role in their qualification process. The scores awarded here could decide the fate of these two divers. Be tight and comfy. You know how to do all these dives better than anyone else. Been doing it for 50 years, something like that. So <laughs> let's go for it. No power, no, no. Finesse, boom, easy, okay? Let's go. Here's Rosalind Filion of Canada. We made a, an impressive return from injury. In December, broke her ankle. Two months later, there she was, a gritty sixth in the World Cup, along with Selena Toth to help Canada get a second berth in the Olympic Games in this event. I am still battling for that spot. Um, we have until Olympic trials. Uh, I managed to come top 18, so is her, to qualify that spot. So it's just a matter of competing and earning points throughout competitions and to get to Olympic trials and win. <laughs> Driven by the desire to win, Rosie and fellow Canadian diver Megan Benfito keep the pressure on Selena, all vying for the coveted two spots in the finals. If Selena advances to the finals, she'll be one step closer to securing her place on the 2016 Olympic team. Fight! In the position there, I want to hear. I want to hear. Hey! Yeah.
The celebration of victory is always met with the reality of a painful defeat for others. With Megan and Rosie advancing to the finals, Selena's Olympic dream gets pushed to Tokyo 2020. It's a little disappointing in the end because, you know, this was my last international opportunity to get a high score for the Olympics, but it's cool that I've gotten this opportunity and I've gotten so far and this season has been so great for me and I'm loving it, but every time, like, it's a little disappointing that it, you know, just kind of fell through a bit today. When you have that disappointing event, um, it can be absolutely heartbreaking and you live that. I mean, your whole heart is in your sport, but it's important as an athlete to just rebound. I mean, that's, as an athlete, you really learn to be resilient and have a lot of grit and determination because you get yourself out of those valleys and move forward. You get to see the highlights in the, in the film roll and you get to see all the great moments. Um, but when you work with them on a day-to-day -day basis, you get to see their highs and their lows, their frustrations and their, their really happy moments. And when it all comes together and the diver is able to do what they really wanted to do in front of those seven judges with all their other competitors, it's a, like I get goosebumps just uh, thinking about it. It's magic. It's something that's really hard to do. The Olympics for me, definitely started by a dream. Some kids do wake up and say, I, I want to go there. For me, it was more like of an idea, right? You know, it, it, that started feeding the fires, feeding that desire to win, that desire to get better every day. Um, and that it didn't stop for um, until I retired. OK, I'm ready. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> In my family, we always watch the Olympics. It's like the religious moment. We have to sit down in front of the TV and watch every event. We just love it. So um, at one point in 96 in Atlanta, I was watching the three meter finals of the women and Annie Peltier won her bronze medal. And when I saw her on that podium, I turned to my parents and I said, I want to be just like her. Well, when I was younger, Emily Haymans was, was really my idol. Being on the same team as your idol and having her around you almost every day was was really cool and it really inspired me and to see her perform that well makes me probably the diver I am today. Sometimes I'm looking and I'm learning from others, but I never had one person that I said that I want to be like her or I want to have the same attitude as, as him because I like to be me. Alex was a big part of uh, inspiration for uh, diving the whole sport. Um, he was like probably one of the big reasons why um, a lot of the athletes and including me kept diving or, or wanted to you know get better and start doing those types of competitions. Uh, Phil, Max, Frankie, you know, were the next guys that are uh, there in line for the Olympics. It's a dream that we've had for a long time, all of us. I, I still had the thought in my head one day I want to go to the Olympics, but I ne didn't really know which one and you know what kind of preparation I needed. After my first World Cup, I was like, okay, maybe 2016 Rio is, is possible. But before that, I had no clue it was even an option 2016. I thought that I would have would have to wait till 2020 Tokyo. And it's really this year that I'm like, wow, it may be possible and it's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, it would. I feel like it's one of the main goals for me, just to go back to the Olympics, knowing that I did absolutely everything to be in the best shape of my life and compete, going on the board, knowing and being extremely proud of what I accomplished in the past four years because it's been a, really a roller coaster. Knowing that I have such a beautiful team on my side and knowing that I have a coach that is more than a coach, he is a father, and knowing that he's going to be there with me, it's it would be amazing. It would be a bigger accomplishment than the 2012 Olympic Games. Uh, I went to the Philippines. Two days later, I got an, I had an accident. I was standing on like this little platform that was about seven meter. As I jumped, it collapsed, and I fell down. And I did my dive, but because it collapsed, I didn't jump far enough to land in the pool. And I landed on a ditch next to the pool. Um, so I had 40 stitches in my head, uh, broken arm, broken wrist, uh, open leg, and open back. I was hospitalized for about a week and a half, had surgery in the Philippines. So I flew home, tendonitis in both my shoulder, my knees, like my body was out of shape. So we did a full year of just like uh, fitness and weight training and rehab three times a week, physiotherapy to like get better. And the next season I started diving and then I've just been 
it's been going better than it's ever ever been. So every every year, like I feel like it's just a blessing, you know. I'm not doing it for the money or for the medals or for the travel. I'm just those are just like uh, you know perks of doing what I love. I can't, I can't stop smiling. And that's what I wanted to do since I was seven years old. So finally getting the chance to do it is just. I don't even have words for it. <laughs> you need to want to work. You need to want to really push your limits, uh, discover, discover new, new things about yourself that you didn't know even existed. Um, you need to be perseverant because the path to being an Olympian is never a straight line and it's always filled with obstacles and whether they're, they're injuries, whether they're psychological, whether you know, they're completely outside of, of your sport, you'll have to deal with them before you even get to the Olympics. You know, and, and you gotta want it. You gotta want it more than anything in the world because otherwise uh, you're not gonna get there. There isn't a one size fits all. You know, um, they can overcome all kinds of, you know, all kinds of uh, weaknesses. Uh, I'm not flexible enough. Well, how much are you working on that? So much can be overcome simply by bulldogging through. And that sounds simple, but I will tell you that most, like 90% of the people out there, the athletes, the noble athletes pursuing the Olympic dream, most of them won't do all the work. So the ones that do are absolutely special. Welcome to the Gatineau Sports Center for our coverage of the men's three meter final. Good looking field of six divers, several of which have already stamped their ticket to the Olympic Games this summer in Rio, Brazil. It'll be a very interesting competition because Francois and Philippe are both trying to make their spot for the Olympic Games. Every competition counts. They're accumulating points towards the ultimate goal. Great teammates, but only one of them right now will go to the Olympic Games. As we get underway in the men's three meter individual final on the springboard. And the big cheer goes up for one of the favorites here. Francois Imbo Dulac, 25 year old. Good start. Now his teammate, Philippe Gagné of Montreal. A bronze medalist in this event one year ago and helped lock up a berth for Canada in the three meters with his performance at the World Cup in Rio. Wow, great start for Philippe. Phil was definitely a part of my inspiration, I guess. I've also learned from him a lot. He had uh, qualities in diving and in life in general that not a lot of people have. Philippe Gagné was fourth after four rounds. Teenage sensation. Getting stronger by the day. Yes! <laughs> wow! What a dive! Here we go, the final round. Round number six of the men's three meter springboard final. Francois Imbo Dulac. Again, one of the best twisting divers in the world. Save. Okay, it's come down to this. Philippe Gagné, the 18-year-old Canadian, clawed his way up into a tie for third, entering this final round. It's come down to this for him to stay on the podium. Yes! <laughs> what a finish! Oh, he nailed it! Such a gorgeous dive. Soon of China. But he's a threat to Gagné of Canada for the podium. It's going to be interesting. Very, very close. Scores 8, 7, 5, 7, 8, 80, 50. That puts him into a tie with Gagne <laughs> right now. And that's wow. very unusual in diving. 469.55 points each. The final results of the men's three meter Rose for gold. Gagne will get the silver. Tie with Soon. And Bodulak will settle for six.
Good job. <laughs> we do a synchro? <laughs> okay. Well, for sure, for the Olympic qualifications, I had to do a good score. I had to get a good score. And to do it in front of you know friends and family and a crowd that was really, really awesome. You know, we can feel the energy on the board. It was crazy. When I was in the water, I could hear them scream, so that was really cool. And to get a score that, that's my highest this year, actually, it, it means a lot. I'm my worst enemy. I feel like it is mostly about psychology. I feel like I need to work a lot more on that than all the other aspects. I know I can do all the dives. I've done it in practice so many times. It just, I need to stop thinking and let my body go. Uh, I've had the privilege to um, be there for him when he needed it. And to me, that is uh, something that is pretty important when you have a coach-athlete relationship. It's not always about just technique or about the performance. Hey, these are people. And uh, I think a, a person that is, has balance in his life and uh, you know, has uh, objectives and is clear on how to obtain those objectives, they're going to have a great opportunity to perform well. If they don't have that, they need help to get that. And that's where uh, the other aspect of coaching is very, very important. Frankie has got to be one of the, um, the, the persons that I know that is able to put everything aside to try and do the job at hand. Chinese divers, Peng and Sun, the leaders through three rounds. Both of these men have won gold medals on the Grand Prix circuit in very close competition. And the battle for medals honed to four teams. Here's Canada's Francois Imbaud du Lac and Philippe Gagné. Wow! What a beautiful dive, man. That was a good dive. Sixth and last round of diving. 17-year-olds from Canada, Peter Takme and Felix Leadhead, are currently in a medal position. This is a great performance for Peter and Felix to build on here. Really, no major mistakes, very, very consistent throughout the whole event. This is a difficult one. One dive to count from Canada's Francois Imbaudulac and Philippe Gagné. And the young Canadians, Tack May and Leadhead, get the bronze. Tremendous final dive, that forward two and a half with two twists. Their best dive of the competition in the sixth and final round as they outscore the Chinese and take the gold in the final round. Sports Center as we get set for the 10 meter men's platform final here at the Canada Cup of Diving. It's Grand Prix stop uh, and this event stocked with uh, medalists so far this year on the Grand Prix including uh, the dominant Chinese diver Junji Lian who has won a couple of gold already joined by another young Chinese diver and there are two Canadians uh, in the mix Maxime Bouchard and Vincent Riandu to the top of the tower, and this is Maxime Bouchard of Canada. We talked about the battle he's in with his compatriot, Vincent Riando, for Canada's Olympic berth. Oh, whoa. The nerves got the better of him right here. This is a big miss for Maxime, because the front three and a half pike. Now to his teammate, and the current leader, through three rounds, Vincent Riando of Canada. Into 
the competition. Yeah, de definitely responding well to the home crowd here. All right, Maxine Bouchard, who made an amazing return to the national team uh, four years ago after uh, nearly being killed in a diving show accident overseas. And he does, yes. And that's a very strong dive for Maxime. One thing he's very good at is that spatial awareness. He knows very well. His teammate, Vincent Riando, the two of them battling for that Olympic berth in Canada, is having one of his greatest series this year. Yes! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> so good! I'm, I'm really enjoying watching Vincent dive today. He's so... He's in the zone, you have to say. Only fly in the ointment is this man, the diminutive 15 year old from China. Can he nail another knife like entry? We saw a couple of dives ago. He's so far back, he's got to be almost perfect here. Wow. <laughs> That's a beautiful entry, but I don't think it's going to be enough. We saw him jump far from that tower, and the judges cannot miss that. What a great finish by this youngster but not enough to overtake Vincent Riando of Canada winning the gold medal. Almost 15 points ahead of the Chinese, Junjin Lian. Talvers moves up onto the podium in his last dive. Bouchard will settle for sixth. This battle for the one Olympic berth right now we will come down to points and a big move by Riando today. Very big, I believe this is either very close, if not almost exactly the same as his personal. It was a good week here. I was kind of lacking confidence this week. I'll try and like do my best for Windsor and Russia because I mean it, the deadline is getting close and right now like we have one spot for the Olympic and like even though I'm the one that opened that spot Vince is the one ahead and the one that who's owning this spot right now so I need to step up my game and really good for the next two weeks. The 2016 Canada Cup FINA Diving Grand Prix delivered some moments to savor for the Canadian team together with some moments of heartbreak. The physical and mental stamina of the athletes were tested. Some triumphed, while others struggled under the intense pressure to succeed. Individual best performances were achieved, including gold in both men's and women's 10-meter events. The Canada Cup proved once again that the pursuit of an Olympic dream is not a path you can walk alone. Many of the divers still need to qualify, so the journey to the Olympics does not end here. They must regroup and refocus on the long road ahead, the road to Rio.